Good afternoon. My name is Megan Callahan, and I wrote and directed the next show you're about to see called Golden. It follows the lives of five individuals trying to survive the crazy roller coaster that is life. So please enjoy. will be the end of me. Is there an off one? Please, Jenny, I can't even think! Try and relax, Macy. Do you want me to make you some tea? No, thanks, though. I'm just frustrated. He spends more time on airplanes than he does at home, and I'm stuck raising his kid. It's not fair. I know, but you love him, and he loves you. It's worth it in the end. Is it, though? Macy, you love Miles. I know it, and he's crazy about you. Don't sabotage something that doesn't need any fixing. You're right, you're right. You're absolutely right. I'm just not myself. <laughs> Why don't you go lay down? You look exhausted. I'll take care of Jenny until Miles gets home. She just needs to be fed, that's all. You're a lifesaver, Charlotte. You know that? <laughs> go, everything's fine. See, she's starting to calm down. Sorry I'm so late, babe. We hit bad headwinds and that snowstorm in Detroit was no help at all and... Oh, Charlotte! Where's Macy? Oh, she worked a double shift today, so I told her to go lie down. Jenny just fell asleep. Oh, God, Charlotte, you're wonderful. Thanks for doing this. <laughs> well, I'd better get going. Uh, do you need me to walk you out? No, I'll be fine. Thanks, though. All right. Wait, Charlotte? Yes? Well, you... everything is... well, you're all right. Right? Yes. Miles, I'm fine. Have Macy call me tomorrow. All right. Thanks again. Bye. How was your day, sweetheart? It was fine. Yours? It was all right. I walked past the bakery on my way home, the one on 45th, and I was thinking, well, maybe we could get breakfast there tomorrow before you go to work, if you want. Um, not tomorrow, honey. I have a huge load of casework at the office that I need to get through by noon. Maybe some other time. Oh, right. Okay, some other time. Nora? Yes? Well, I was wondering if you had given any thought to what we talked about the other day. What do you mean? Look, can you just come in here so I can talk to you, please? What is it? Sit down. What? Nora, I've asked you to marry me three times. You keep saying you need more time, but I can't just wait and sit around any longer. I need to know your answer. Um, babe. I'm tired. Can we talk about this in the morning? Of course. Thanks. Good night. Good night. I'll be there in a minute.
And I mean, what better time than now, you know? I have a friend in Queens that says she has a spare room I can stay in. And what about Miles? Are you just gonna drop him like a fly? <laughs> Honestly, Nora, he won't even know I'm gone. He's gone so much, and by the time he realizes what's happening, I'll be hundreds of miles away. So, that's it. You're just gonna get up and leave home because... What's your reason again? You're being dramatic, Macy. You're afraid of responsibility, and you still want to be a child. I'm not acting like a child, Nora. I'm being serious. My head is going to explode. I can't stay in this goddamn place much longer. I'm just... I'm sick of the so social expectations we're put through. If anyone strays from them, we're either eventually hated, or just... I'm just frustrated, and I just can't stay in here any longer. Macy, come on. You're being a baby about all this. Just go home to Miles, and you'll work things out. You need to stop these childish fantasies. You need to grow up and accept responsibility and adulthood. God, Nora, you just don't get it. I don't want this life. Your life. Hell, you don't even want your life. You stay with James out of comfort. And how many times has he asked you to marry him? And yet you always turn him down. You're afraid, Nora. You're afraid of change. Do not bring me into this, Macy. This is about you and, and your selfishness. <laughs> oh, do not tell me about selfishness. You have quite possibly the nicest man on the planet, head over heels in love with you, and yet that's still not good enough. You're pathetic. Get out! What? I said, get out. Fine. But let me tell you one last thing. I don't know what in hell makes James put up with you, but he won't put up with you forever. He deserves someone kind, someone who gives a shit about him, and someone with a heart. So have fun being alone and bitter, because that's what you've become. You push everyone away so you can have your precious freedom. But is it worth it? Is it really worth giving up a family and a man who loves you just to be alone? You know, you're sad, and I feel sorry for you. Have a good life, Nora. God knows I will. And when you finally realize how lonely freedom really is, you won't have me to call, because I'll be gone. <laughs> and so will James. Hope it's worth it to you. Goodbye, Nora. Miss Reed, I'm Dr. Larson. I've reviewed your test results. Unfortunately, it's, they came... It's cancer, isn't it? Yes. You have cervical cancer in the third stage. This means the cancer has spread from the source. You, you have about a 30 to 40 percent chance of survival. 30 percent? I'm, I'm so, so sorry but we will do everything we can to ensure you get the best care. There are many treatments for a condition. There's radiation therapy and chemo. Thank you, Dr. Larson. But if you don't mind, I'd like a moment to myself. Of course. How long have you known? Six months. Six months? And you're only just now telling me? For Christ's sake, we're family, Charlotte. I know, I'm sorry. I didn't know for sure. I just got tested about a month ago. God damn it. I can't believe it. I just can't. This isn't happening. I don't want you to mention this to anyone, James. What? Why not? Because I want to live out my last few months as normally as possible. 
I want to stay happy and get everything I can out of what life I still have left. Don't talk to me like that. Don't you dare talk to me like that. You know I can't handle it. James, I've accepted it and you should too. Accept it? How the hell do I accept the fact that my little sister is dying of cancer, huh? Am I just supposed to sit back and smile as I watch you die? No. No, I can't do that. I won't. James! I have to go. James! I'll call you tomorrow. <laughs> what? It's Charlotte. Can I come in? Sorry, I thought it was my landlord asking for the rent. Well, that's all right. I just came to see how you're holding up. How are you? God, Charlotte, look at me. I'm a mess. Jenny just keeps screaming and I sit here. She finally fell asleep 15 minutes ago. I take it she hasn't called? Not once. Miles, I know just about anything I say right now won't make you feel any better. But Macy did love you. I know she did. Charlotte, I'm really glad you're here right now. I don't know what I'd do without you. I'm here for whatever you need, James. I'm Miles. Right. So. I'll get her. Don't worry. Must have been a bad dream. I think she senses her daddy isn't happy. Miles, do you want to talk about anything? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Just a twitch is all. Well, I guess I'm just lonely now. I spent so long with Macy, I don't really remember how to be alone. But that's okay. Being alone is okay. Once you get used to it, it's actually sort of nice. You always know the answers, don't you? You always know what to say. Actually, I find myself doubting the things I do and the choices I make all the time. We're all still learning, Miles, and I don't believe any of us know the answers, even in a lifetime. Macy was lost. She's just trying to find herself now. Um, I know you feel a loss too. I think that sort of feeling is embedded in all of us. We carry it with us through life, and while some people see it as a burden, I look at it as a motivator to continually push us to strive for what's real, for what actually means something in this world. I think, I think that if we're constantly striving and trying to find the real meaning of things, then we've won. It's only when we sit and stare at walls waiting for life to pass us by when we really lose. How can you be so sure of yourself, Charlotte? How do you stay so calm? Because I hold on to what's golden, what's worth living for. It gives me a goal and a purpose to stay here and deal with life's everyday tribulations. Otherwise, I don't know what I'd do with myself. Well, I'd better get going. Are you going to be all right? Yeah. Yeah, I think I'll be fine. Wait, Charlotte? Yes? Well, I know that this might sound sort of crazy, but you maybe want to, I don't know, stay with me? What? Well, stay with me, please. It would be great. You could put your things in the closet and park next to me. Jenny already loves Miles, you, so I can't. I'll stay home from work more. We could watch movies and cook dinner together. We could stay here, just the two of us, watching the sunset every night. Doesn't that sound great? Miles, stop. I can't be a replacement for Macy. Oh, Charlotte, no, you wouldn't be a replacement for Macy at all. Macy never did that stuff with me. It took her walking out of me to realize I was never in love with her to begin with. And then with you, I feel right. It all sounds amazing. I just can't. Why not? I just can't, all right? I'm sorry. I have to go. Are you in love with someone else? I don't love you. Miles, I'm sorry.
November 28, 2009. I, Charlotte Louisa Reed, will all of my primary assets to my brother James. I want him to have everything. What I had wasn't much, but it's what was important. I, I want... Good afternoon. I'm Julie Thompson, Ms. Reed's attorney. Thank you all for coming. I'm very sorry for your loss. It's very untimely too, I'm afraid. Doesn't make for a very happy Christmas. <laughs> uh, well then, let's get started, shall we? It says here that all her primary assets belong to James Reed, her brother. That's me, ma'am. Very good. She does include a few notes here, too. I'll read them to you. The first one is entitled Macy. Is Macy present? Hi, Macy. It says, my dearest friend, I have never doubted for a second that you would go on to do great things in life. I hope that with a small amount of money, you'll be able to afford a new camera and maybe your own studio apartment to help you follow your dreams of becoming a professional photographer. You are very talented. Please follow your heart. I believe in you. Love always, Charlotte. Money's inside the envelope. Next is entitled Nora. I'm Nora, ma'am. Says, Nora, please be good to my brother James. He loves you with all of his heart. I hope you'll accept my blessing to marry him. Take a leap of faith. Without taking a risk, we never achieve anything worthwhile. Be good to him. Love, Charlotte. I love Charlotte. And the last letter is entitled Miles. Is Miles present? That's me, ma'am. I'm Miles. This was strange, but the only thing she wrote in here was, well, I suppose you should read it. She has strict orders for only you to see it. Comes with a gold locket as well. It's inside the envelope. Well, thank you all for coming. And again, I'm very sorry for your loss. Miles. I miss you. Can we go somewhere to talk? We can take Jenny to the park. She loves the park. I just need some alone time right now. Sorry. Sure. I understand. Um, I'll... Call me when you have the time. I'll be staying with James and Nora. Ready, babe? Yeah, I'm ready. Um, James, wait a second. Uh, I know this isn't the most romantic spot in the world, but and you'll probably say no, but would you ever consider asking me again? What? Ask me again, please. <laughs> <laughs> Nora Elizabeth Marshall, will you marry me? Yes, James, and I'm sorry I've waited this long. <laughs> I've always loved you and always will.